the only one Praying to the one who can bring me this free All I know now is that what I'm holding in my hand is what they wrote But how do I know that what they wrote was true? Isn't that an important question? How do I know that what they wrote is true? So the closer you are in time to the events, and the closer you are in space to the events, the more reliable your story is going to be. Several times throughout the New, the New Testament, you know what their argument for why you should believe what they were saying about Jesus? You know what the argument was? We were eyewitnesses of these things. We are telling you what we have both seen and what we have heard. You can't get any closer to that. They're saying, I'm going to tell you what I saw with my own eyes. I'm going to tell you what, what, what I heard with my own ears. You know what Luke said? Luke, he wrote the book of Luke and he wrote the book of Acts. By the way, he's the only non-Jewish author in the New Testament. He was a medical doctor. He was trained to think critically. He was raised in a polytheistic, which means many God world, world uh, religion. He was taught that if you only believed in one God, you were ignorant. You were like a caveman. You were dumb if you only believed in one God. What would it take for an educated adult who was a doctor in those days? He'd walk into a town being the only doctor that town might have ever seen. He was like a rock star. What would it take for that guy to go from that status to walking away from all of that to living the rest of his life to take care of one patient, Paul? You know, it, it, it wasn't somebody tricking him when they got up to speak. You know what caused Luke to go from believing in many gods to only believing in one God and walking away from all of that wealth and power? You know what it took? Evidence. He starts off the book of Luke by saying, I will only write to you, Theophilus, those things that I have already confirmed among many witnesses. He kept interviewing people and everybody's stories matched. When Peter was preaching the first time, he gets up and he says, Jesus, whom you crucified, who you buried, who rose from the dead, three days later, who was seen by over 500 witnesses at one time, plus all of us, is the Messiah, as you yourselves know. Now, if we're going to be arguing, and I don't know your name, what's your name? Guess. What? Guess. I thought you said guess. And I was like, I can't. <laughs> Cass? Cass, Cass, stand up real quick. I'm not going to embarrass you, I promise, unless standing is embarrassing. All right, but you can stand well. Good job, you did that good. He's wearing a what color shirt? Now, if we're going to be in a debate, and you guys are a hostile audience, and my job is to convince you of something you're predisposed to be against, if I said to you, his shirt is green, as you yourselves know, what's your response going to be? That's it. That, that's my point. You're all going to say something back because it's not a true statement for me to say his shirt is green as you yourselves know because you don't know that to be true. You know that his shirt is purple. So if I said that, that's not a convincing argument. Thank you, Cass. So Peter gets up to a hostile crowd of more than 3,000 and he goes, Jesus was, whom you crucified was buried and rose from the dead and was seen by witnesses after he rose from the dead, as you yourselves know. You know what the crowd said? Nothing. You know why? You tell me why. What is the only logical conclusion? How about this? 3,000 people got saved after that one sermon because he gave one piece of evidence. You know what the evidence was? As you yourselves know. If they were lying about what, about what they wrote about, then you, as an intellectual, have to explain to me why Christianity grew faster in the first 60 years of existence than at any other time in history. When there were more eyewitnesses alive in that moment than in any other time in history to prove that what they were saying was untrue if it was untrue. So you as an intellectual who's wondering whether or not you should believe the Bible or not, explain to me then why. When there were more eyewitnesses alive then than at any other time in history, why did Christianity experience its fastest growth? 
because everything that they said was true could be confirmed as true. That's why. So did they tell the truth? Obviously they told the truth. It was said in Rome by politicians that these Christians have turned the world upside down. That was said within 60 years of Jesus' resurrection. It was already heard about in Rome. They've turned the whole world upside down. It's going crazy. It's, going, it's, it's taken over the world. Why? Because it was true and it was easily proven to be true. If there was anything in here that was not true, it would have been tossed out before it ever got passed on. So what I'm holding in my hand is what they wrote. And what they wrote is true because historical evidence proves it to be true. Is there any other evidence outside of the Bible? As free.